Imagine our golden triangle as something other than the glistening jewel it is today. Imagine it before Fifth Avenue Place and PPG Plaza, before the Jenkins Arcade, before the Point was a park, before the bridges our grandparents crossed were even conceived. Before all of this, the Triangle was an urban neighborhood, a place where people crowded together to live and work, to raise families, to dream, to dream big dreams. Martin Delaney was one of those Pittsburghers. He was a dreamer. He had a fantastically ambitious dream, and he came so close to realizing that dream. It was within his reach, but then the dream was crushed. Crushed not because Martin didn't have enough talent or energy or wisdom. Everyone agreed he had plenty of those things. Martin's incredible dream was crushed because, well, let's catch up with Martin on the streets of Pittsburgh. It's April of 1854. Martin is going from house to house through a city in distress. Large coal fires burn in the streets, which are jammed with horses, carriages, and carts. People are trying to get out. It's hot in Pittsburgh, but parts of the triangle have a white, wintry look. It's not snow on the ground, it's lime. The fires, the lime, the fleeing people, it's all an effort to ward off or avoid a disease called cholera. Cholera came to Pittsburgh on a Monday night. Within a few days, the Daily Pittsburgh Gazette was publishing a list of those claimed by the disease. There was Samuel Phillips, a grocery store clerk. There was a poor soul listed only as child at some house, aged four years. Cholera took Michael Reelingwalt, aged three years, and William Coyle, a shoemaker. The grim list continued for days, hundreds of names. They died horrible deaths within hours of contracting the disease. Doctors hustled from house to house, treating the sick and dying. And then the doctors began to flee. And that's where we find Martin Delaney, treating the sick and the dying. He's organized a team of nurses, black nurses, to treat the sick, all of the sick, no matter what their color. Now, Martin wasn't a doctor. He could have been. In 1850, Martin applied to Harvard Medical College. He was 38 years old with an impressive list of accomplishments. He'd founded and published a Pittsburgh newspaper called The Mystery, and he teamed up with Frederick Douglass to co-edit a publication called The North Star. In addition, Martin had studied the basics of medicine under several white doctors. Seventeen of those physicians wrote letters of recommendation for Martin. They praised his intelligence his character, his energy, and he was one of three blacks accepted, the first three accepted at Harvard Medical School. But this was 1850, and a month after Delaney arrived, a group of white students wrote to the faculty. They were complaining about the blacks among them. They said they had no objection to the education and elevation of blacks, but do decidedly remonstrate against their presence in the college with us. Within three weeks, Delaney and his two fellow black students were dismissed. It was a devastating blow. Delaney returned to Pittsburgh. He was disappointed, and he was angry. And he became convinced that his dream could never be realized here in the United States. Black men, he felt, should leave and found a new nation someplace else. It was a position he would promote in his speeches and writings. He would become the first proponent of American black nationalism. And so here is this man, a man who is told he could not have a medical degree because he was black, and he's walking the smoky, lime-drenched streets of Pittsburgh. Many doctors with degrees had fled, and yet here is Martin Delaney, a man denied a degree. It is he who stays to face cholera. What's going through his mind? What would go through your mind? Fear? Anger over past indignities? Would you resent those school doctors who'd fled? Martin Delaney may have felt all these things. We'll never know. What we do know is that when this city needed someone to treat its sick and dying, a man who felt he had no place in this country proved to be that man.